contemporary British photographers. Simon Labarastier is a 26-year-old graduate of the Royal College of Art and a practitioner of the new method in photography of reworking images by applying unorthodox ways of printing. It's proving a great commercial success as art directors, intrigued by the process, are swamping La Balestier with commissions. We followed him into the darkroom, at the photocopier, and on location. Normally I do a lot of the work in the studio because I mainly photograph still lives. What I'm doing here is a shoot for a catalogue of designer furniture and we needed a variety of backdrops. I was wondering was there any, any lighter, but your, I suppose you'll bleach that back. Yeah. Fortunately, Russell Bagley, the designer, has the same fascination with decaying metal that I have. And this is what interests me in the finish of his pieces. The still life is something that's physically created in front of the camera. Uh, my collages are something that's usually created on the top of a photocopy screen or pieces that have been photocopied and then reassembled. In the majority of my work, I'm constructing an event that never actually happened, creating a combination of elements you just won't find in the same place. It's not something you can go on location and spend half a day looking for. My work isn't about capturing the moment. People say the camera never lies because it photographs reality. But what I do in my work is create my own reality. I'm interested in imperfection and the way that the passing of time erodes everyday objects. The Royal College of Art sort of seem to form this school, which the founders I always think of are people like Holly Warburton. And this sort of um, manipulated work, as it's come to be called, although it's not a very nice sort of descriptive name for it, um, became very fashionable. I think you can, it's interesting to see it in a broad spectrum in the arts. I mean, with music, with scratching and all that sort of thing, messing things up. The same also with interior design, distressing walls, wanting to see things cracked and breaking down. So you could say it's sort of a general fashionable feel to make things look old again. I think it's been exploited a lot, though, like all these things, because immediately a million photographers jumped on the bandwagon and started ripping their pictures up and sticking them together and saying, this is art. And, of course, if you haven't actually got a talent there in the first place or you haven't got, you know, a specific thing you're trying to create, then it's very obvious. The bits and pieces I've collected are used for very specific purposes. They often take a long time to find. This collection lets me slip personal references into commission projects. A lot of my commercial commissions, like record covers for the Pixies and book jackets, have let me enlarge the collection. I've been lucky in the commission work I've had. It's been very close to my own work. Sympathetic art directors like Vaughan Oliver and Peter Dyer know what intrigues me. The commercial work is a fusion of their inspiration and my obsessions, and their typography is an essential ingredient in the finished product. It takes a long time, I think, for, in this area, when you're doing sort of more art illustration type photography, to get commercial work, because people are very nervous about commissioning you. Um, and when you go in straight out of college and really you've just got personal things to show, they, they can't be sure that you can follow a brief in any way at all. So you're always in that catch-22 situation. You've got to show them that someone, something that someone's commissioned you to do before they'll feel happy about doing it. But now that he's done a few, um, you know, he's really hot property. La Ballestier has subsequently been commissioned to do book jackets for Secker and Warburg and magazine illustrations. His photographs currently grace the labels of a new range of upmarket sherries for Asda supermarkets. A lot of the still lives are shot very flat with the camera directly above. I look for surfaces with interesting textural marks because I mainly shoot in black and white. These are chosen to create tonal values which simplifies my lighting. 
I'm happiest working in a state of controlled chaos. Somewhere along the line, I have a feeling about the final image. I'll know it when I see it, but it's very flexible. As well as working on commissions and private work, La Balestier is also a research fellow at the Royal College of Art, where Canon is sponsoring him for two years to explore the creative photographic potential of a state-of-the-art photocopier. I'm working here on a commission for a paper company who wants an image which will allow them to demonstrate the various printing potentials of their paper. With this in mind, I'm collaging various elements together onto a single print. This is a one-off commission where the final result really is the finished artwork. This photocopier has been a useful way of allowing me to rework my pictures in full colour. I use the copy like an instant printing process, in much the same way as I use a Polaroid to make my negatives. Immediately I see how composition, lighting and colour will affect my image and allow me to develop my ideas. The copy allows me to create colour ranges which would be impossible to get using conventional colour film and printing, which just isn't subtle enough. The photocopy is just one way of working. The fact that it's a copier can be misleading because it appears that everything happens at the touch of a button. But it's the same basic principle as pressing the shutter of a camera. It's just another way of making images, which after all is what I'm about. I think this machine's greatest benefit is the fact that it's able to enlarge something and put it onto multiple sheets of paper. Uh, effectively, this is going to be a 400% enlargement of that size, and it's going to put it onto 16 A3 sheets. Really, just seeing it immediately at a large size is, is a great benefit to, um, to deciding how the final image is going to work. What I do in the dark room is the heart of my work. It's where I decide whether a photograph needs further development. The beauty of doing your own printing is that you can change your mind at any point. Accidents always happen and result in some of my favourite work. What's interesting is the random nature of the process like varying the way the light falls on the paper. This is the hardest part of what I do. Effects that happen spontaneously can often take a week to recreate in a controlled way. I'm not precious about it and I expect to throw a lot in the bin. It's a sort of alchemy. You have to know the properties of every ingredient and still be open to surprises. Chemicals like bleaches and toners act as a catalyst and change the surface of the print. Although this darkroom chemistry creates interesting effects, it's no good without a strong original concept, a well-composed image. If it doesn't feel right, I'll reshoot.
In the future, I want to make my work much more about observation, taking it away from the constructed theme of found objects, which is becoming very popular. I want to explore further the stories hinted at in my work. of Simon Labalestier. 